the case of Stephen Ling. Now, you may recall he was the killer who stabbed his victim 60 times during the sexual act. He's been cleared to be released by the parole board. He's now 49. He carved crosses and swastikas into 29-year-old Joanne Tulip's body during an attack after he lured her to his home in Northumberland on Christmas Day in 1997. He was jailed for life a year later. After his review, his minimum term behind bars was set at 18 years. A public parole hearing was held in July, although Ling was permitted to give evidence in private, and the decision now to set him free has understandably upset many, one of whom is the victim's mum, Doreen Salisbury, who joins me now. I want to start by apologising by having to put you through all of that, and thank you for coming on the show. When did they inform you that this killer would be released? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nick. Ten o'clock on Monday morning. How did that? Um, how did you react at the news? Oh, just shocked and horrified because of the things we heard at the parole hearing that he was doing in prison. He's preoccupied with sex and did some horrible things in prison. And he, it was the same when he murdered my daughter. He's preoccupied with sex. And um, he was charged with rape, but, but when it got to court, the judge didn't put the rape through the court. So now we have a serious offender, a sadistic serious offender, who's not a convicted sex offender. What's your, greatest, citing, what's your greatest fear, Doreen? Oh, that he'll re-offend, he will. He's only 49 and he's been locked up since he was 23. And he's preoccupied with sex in prison even. Oh, you know, he opens up and he has these feelings and um, he diaries them. And we are confident that he will manage them outside when he's released. Like heck, he will, left to his own devices. Had the parole even board sought witness evidence from you, what would you or your family have said? Um, I would have said that he's... I mean, so sadistic, the things he did. And it was all out of his own head. It's the way his head's wired. Uh, the process in which he did things. And from the age of 12 years of age, he's been doing sexual things, exposing himself to young girls, peeping Tom, stalking women. And then a year before Joanne, he got into a, he was trying to get into a girl's house, but she was on her own. And he put his foot in the door, and she managed to get him out. So he's... It's been there since he was 12 years of age, and you can't change the way a person is made, how he's wired in his head. Did you ever meet and him? that's what concerns me. No, I haven't met him, but I know I've got family in the village where he lived um, and where Joanne was at her father's that night. Um, and I've got lots of friends in the village still. Who, I mean, he was known as a weirdo in the village, and all those things before all those issues uh, um, that he did before Joanne were not reported. But I was assured by Dominic Rabb that they were well documented in the dossier. And certainly at the hearing, they did mention them. So I'm really concerned that this guy, who's got a head wired like that, he was profiled as a picurist, probably we don't know what that means, but it was the process in which he did things the process of the attack. Um, Doreen, what, 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 was the, what has the impact been on your family? We are going back some years, but of course, you never forget, it just gets less raw. Yeah, it's always there, but you get better at living with it. Um, but I've been fighting to get that rape charge back into court for 25 years. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. Um, and now, I mean, this whole thing has broken up our family, particularly at Christmas time, because it was Christmas Day when was. she was murdered. Yes. And I was informed at quarter to 11 in the morning when I was with my young grandchildren and went ballistic screaming when I got the news. Yes. And um, we were identifying Joanne when everybody else was eating their Christmas lunch. Oh, my God. And so Christmas is, I have yet to be able to spend a Christmas with my son and his family. I just can't 
do Christmas anymore no. in any shape or form. No, it must be horrific. Now, the parole board will say this man will have to wear an electronic tag for a year, but as you point out, he won't sign the sex offenders register as the rape charge was what's allowed to be left to lie on the file. Why is that so yeah. important? Why is that so important in this? He needs to be convicted of, of rape. Sorry, he is convicted of rape, but he hasn't been... Sorry, no, he's not. He's been he's charged not been with rape. Charged, but not convicted. convicted. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, uh, I just hope that, well, I just, you know, you can't trust uh, the probation service and people out there, the multi-agencies, mm. because they're short staffed. You know, they're under-resourced and everything. And I'm so worried that uh, it'll just disappear under the radar. I can understand your concerns. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Doreen. I'm sorry it hasn't... I hope it hasn't caused you to rest. I'm sorry I had to go through the details. I'm sure you hear them when you do these broadcast interviews, but I'm aware it's not easy for you as mum. Doreen Salisbury was the mother of Joanne Tulip, who was killed in that horrific fashion. Not that there's any great way to be killed, I get that, but particularly brutal fashion back in 1997. Um, Adam says, this is disgusting. Uh, Debbie says, how on earth can this be allowed to happen? Uh, this comes in from Lenny. <laughs> I would even take the conservative, the conservative's ineptitude over Labour's total inability to control our jails. Well, they've only been in two months. Adam's in Maidstone. Adam, what do you want to say? Good morning. Morning, Nick. Um, I'm really upset about this. This is disgusting. I can't, I can't believe this. I, I would take Conservative Party Gate lies and the lies that they've done over this sort of stuff any day. They've attacked the pensioners and now they're attacking the, the vulnerable. They're letting these, this guy was cutting swastikas yep. into a sort of body and they're yep. going to let him out and just put him on tag. What is going on? This is wrong. He stabbed the, woman, he stabbed the young woman 60 times and then, as you rightly say, he carved crosses and swastikas into her body. For somebody to stab another human being 60 times, you have to have something wrong with your brain. To do it 60 times. Yes. Yeah. Now, this, is, of course, is the this is a parole board decision, just to clarify. So this isn't the early release. This is a parole board decision that the family were informed on Monday. Then we go to people who are violent, but not at the same level, but who threaten to throw acid in their faces, uh, who try to, he well, who do headbutt, punch, kick and break their partner's jaws. And they're also to be released, Adam. This, this, is, this is completely wrong. I haven't heard, correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't heard Starmer say that he's building new prisons. Like, we're going to build one there, we're going to build one there. To... The population has gone up, so inevitably the infrastructure of prisons needs to be there because there's horrible people in this world. Adam, you're not wrong. And indeed, in Maidstone, of course, there's quite a sizeable jail, which I've driven past many times. God, you just wish the Prime Minister had been Director of Public Prosecution. Oh, hang on, he was, wasn't he?